Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, HOD of the PSP. Like, share, comment on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, enable notifications to always receive all the updates from the content on the channel. Of course, follow us on social media. And the podcast is going to be returning on Monday. I'm not going to be doing an African episode this week. I'm pretty busy with other things. But I'm going to be doing, um, you know, the, the normal podcast episode is going to drop on Monday. But this video is for different reasons. I'm reacting to the World Cup draw that took place on Friday in Qatar, of course, for the World Cup in November. It was not complete. There was three sides that are yet to be determined from the three playoffs that will be played. The European playoff, the intercontinental playoff between South America and uh, Asia, and the other intercontinental playoff between New Zealand and Costa Rica. Um, to, to talk about the groups really quickly, it's a bit of a impulsive kind of reaction. It's not an, an, a deep analysis, although I would hope to get into that in a separate video, hopefully in the, probably the next break or something along, uh, cr- close to the end of the season. Uh, Group A with a host, of course, Qatar, drawn against Ecuador, Senegal, the champions of Africa and Netherlands, of course, quite, in, quite an interesting group to look forward to. Group B, England, Iran, until, I don't know, if they get pulled out of the World Cup with the investigation going on against them by FIFA, USA and, of course, the winners from the European playoff, Ukraine, Scotland or Wales. Group C, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. That's also pretty interesting, although it looks easy for Argentina to get through this. Group D, the group that interests me the most, uh, with Tunisia in it, of course, alongside France, Denmark, and the winners from Australia, United Arab Emirates, or Peru in that Asian uh, South American qualifiers. Group E, Spain, Germany, Japan, and the winners, of course, are the other playoff between Costa Rica and New Zealand. Group F, Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. Group G, Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. And Group H, it is Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and South America. So we'll look at the groups really quickly. Group A, the host Qatar. I'm not going to say it's an easy group, but I think it's a pretty favorable group considering that. I mean, I'm not going to really throw allegations that they were tampering with the draw, but, you know, it's a pretty favorable group when you look all things considered. They could have they could have had the likes of Germany or Croatia uh, in, in that second part, or Denmark, for example, uh, even. Senegal, the African champions, I'm really interested in looking at how they will perform in this group. I think it, will, it's give them, it gives them a big chance to go through at least second, like they legit can be top of that group. Netherlands might be the favourites, but looking at the way they performed in the Euros, um, yes, they've been good in the Louis van Gaal since he returned, but I don't think uh, that, 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 that bulletproof, that's what the, the word I'm looking for, they're not bulletproof exactly, so I think Netherlands, I mean, they're going to be first, I mean, I, I will just say the top, because they have better quality than Ecuador and Qatar to get six points out of them, Senegal, the good team, Champions of Africa, but I'm not sure if they have enough to be fully stronger than Ecuador and Qatar, particularly with the advantage of the host nation. Group B, a politically charged group, that's what I can call it. I mean, there's potential for an all-English derby or British derby between Scotland, Wales, uh, Scotland or Wales and England. There's the Iran-USA match. I mean, Iran uh, are under investigation at the moment. We don't know what is going on with their situation, of course. And of course, USA, a side that is developing a lot, having lo- lots of you know young players blossoming uh, in the European leagues. You know the likes of Giovanni Reina, Christian Pulisic, as you know, Des, Josh Sargent, and the list goes on and on and on. And they're really having arguably one of their best generations yet that they saw in the World Cup. I mean, they go a long way back from the non-football practicing generation in in 1994 when they first participated. But I think it's different now. They have one of the best generations of all, but probably the experience experience is going to be a big factor in that because they haven't been in the last World Cup and since they've been there in 2014 there has been a big transition in the American football and I'm not talking about the sport that they call football I'm talking about the real football that they play in the MLS now uh, in Group C Argentina Saudi Arabia Mexico and Poland you look at it and say you know what Argentina are going to walk over this group and it's going to be easy I, I can support that opinion Mexico might be second they're qualified for the last seven uh, round of 16 um, knockout stages of the last seven World Cups, which is pretty impressive, but they never got past that round. Poland with Lewandowski, maybe they're going to be over-reliant on him. Who knows what could happen, but I don't really see any kind of reason 
why Poland can't get out of this group second behind Argentina. So it's going to be probably between Mexico and Poland. The winner of that match is going to be uh, the winner, uh, the second of the group, pro probably behind Argentina. Saudi Arabia for me. Unfortunately, there's a big gulf between the Saudi Arabian players and the big, you know, teams in Europe and South America. The difference in quality is just absolutely stark in contrast when you look at it, how they perform in Asia and how they perform in the World Cup. The last times they were in the World Cup, they took a drop in each one. In 2002, they, were, they took eight against Germany. In 2006, they, they lost four against Spain. In 2018, they lost five against Russia. So, uh, you know, considering everything, I think Argentina will probably boss this group and and Poland's going to be behind it. England's going to boss Group B just to, to, to return back on that. Now we move to my group. Uh, and why I'm saying my group because, of course, it involves Tunisia, Denmark, France, and the winner from that playoff between Australia, Emirates, and then the winner uh, meets Peru. Um, the, the winner of that playoff, I think, is going to be a wild card in this group. So I'm not going to really make a final judgment uh, on the group as a whole until we see who will qualify from the playoffs. But I think as far as Tunisia is concerned... I think Denmark, um, the, the match against Denmark is going to be the first match, will be the biggest and will be probably the most important if we want to have any chance of qualifying. The chances are slim, and I think all the pundits, all the experts, I think, agree and sort of made a convention that Tunisia is the weakest of the African side. I don't really d object to that, but I think we can be better by November. We can be a better squad by November. We can have a better uh, a chemistry, maybe. I'm not going to, I don't see a different coach being our coach in November so maybe that's a negative point but I think overall if we we have a good match against Denmark the fact that the match our match against France is the last one so it would, would avoid the shock uh, of, of maybe having heavy loss to start with potentially so we avoid that playing against Denmark a little bit favorable but not exactly and then you have the match against the winners of the playoffs which is going to be all to play for i think for tunisia if we have a good result against denmark uh our chances are slim but i think a realistic uh, a realistic you know uh look at it will be friends denmark top in the group but i think again this is not my final judgment when the winner of the playoffs is determined. I'm going to be back on this and I'm going to be looking at it in, de in depth a little bit more. Group E, probably the toughest of the groups, I think. Spain, Germany, arguably the big, in inarguably, not just arguably, inarguably the biggest match in the group stage. The, the showcase in the group stage that people are going to be all looking forward to. I don't think without a doubt they're going to be going both out of this group. Japan, not the same Japan of old. The winner of the playoffs, however it is, Costa Rica and New Zealand, I don't think it would pose a big threat to uh, to Spain and Germany. It will do fine, probably, in annoying them during the matches, but I don't think it will get points out of them, possibly. Uh, group F, another African side, Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia, Morocco. I think the most even of matches they will have is going to be against Canada. Um, Belgium and Croatia are favourites, but I, uh, Croatia, of course, with the being, being the runners-up of the last World Cup. Um, Canada, a developing nation, first time since 1986 they've been there, which is, you know, um, all sorts of happiness for me personally. I want to see Alfonso Davis in that World Cup so much. Um, but I think Morocco are in, are in for a tough task against Croatia and against Belgium, albeit this Belgium generation is starting to fade really badly i think they're, they're getting older and older and with that age it, you know comes a lot of you know uh you know negatives and and disadvantages for them and, and really bad mistakes show up particularly in the back i think they have one of the in my opinion out outright worst defenses out of all the heads of the groups in this tournament including qatar um, so I think this group, probably Belgium, Croatia, going to tussle it up for top of the group. I, I could even go Croatia being top of the group. I feel like they, they could be a better side than Belgium. Um, Morocco and Canada, you know, have all the chances to play for in this group. I hope Morocco makes it somehow, but I don't see that happening. Group G, the last, uh, or the, another African group, uh, the penultimate African side in this tournament. Cameroon are drawn with Switzerland, Serbia and Brazil. I don't see anywhere, any world where Cameroon could make it out of this group, unfortunately. Switzerland and Serbia are probably going to battle it out for second behind Brazil. Brazil are running right at the moment. They're one of the best sides in the world. They're favourites to win the World Cup. They have a really one of the richest squads at the moment in the world, probably alongside France, maybe even Portugal and England. They have some of the richest squads in the world at the moment. And they really have um, options across the park, defence, midfield, attack, you can name it, even goalkeeping position. They have two world-class goalkeepers in Alisson and Edison, so I don't think they have 
much of a problem there. Serbia, Switzerland will dust it out for the second place, and I think Cameroon, unfortunately, are going to end up last. However, things considered, I, I hope for the sake of African nations, I hope they do fine, but I don't see that happening. Probably Algeria would have been better suited to do something, uh, but of course, the fall uh, of that side means that Cameroon are in this group. And in Group H, one of the quite frankly most open groups and maybe surprisingly would be open uh, in the tournament Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, South Korea. Ghana surprised everyone and beat Nigeria to this place so it could have been Nigeria there which would have been much plausible as a scenario that they go through. Ghana, yes they defeated Nigeria or they're drawn against Nigeria to go through but I don't think they have enough to beat the likes of Uruguay, South Korea and of course Portugal who should be fine in this group. I'm really worried about Portugal because Fernando Santos tend to shoot himself in the foot and Portugal tend to shoot themselves in the foot overall. So I don't think they it will be plain sailing. It will be a little bit harsh, particularly against Uruguay. South Korea, they will try and rely on Hyun Min Son, I think, but yeah, they don't have much going for them aside from that. And Ghana is the wild card. I mean, in this group, of course, has the sub-storyline of Ghana-Uruguay facing for the first time since that match in 2010 World Cup where Luis Suarez broke the hearts of the African nations, basically an African continent as a whole. It will be a revenge match probably for Ghana, but I don't think that the Ghana of now is on par with that side of 2010, even in terms of like mentality and chemistry on its own. That Ghana side were absolutely firing and coming over back of, of, a, of an African Cup of Nations final, so it's not the same um, same consequences or the same stats or the same information uh, or the same situation at, as of Ghana at the moment. So that was a look. Of the groups in general, I don't think there's a group that they could point out and say the group of death, but it, but you know, there's wisely poised, I think, for the most part, particularly for the second places, because I think the top places, for the most part, they're pretty uh, determined, I think, for, for the rest of the group, probably aside from group A, I think. Uh, the rest of the groups, we can all point out and, and look at the top of the table who will be uh, qualifying on top of those groups. But until then, of course, there's still going to be lots to talk about for the World Cup until uh, we get to November, uh, but, you know, when, when it starts, of course. Um, hopefully we do well for Tunisia in, in that group. I'm really worried, but I just have this deep hope in me that we we might do fine not necessarily qualify but we might do just fine and and give a good account for ourselves because a lot of people are underestimating us and and everybody seems to be piling on us and everybody seems to have the best draw possible for them involving tunisia in some reason anyway but you know what we could take that we're fine i really accept it if it was about that i'll really take it anyway um that's it for the video thanks for watching slash listening i was with hod the bsp like share comment on this what do you think and subscribe to the youtube channel always enable notifications to receive the updates follow us on social media and until next time i'll see you soon